two dogs that have an S gene and an L gene. S for short hair, L for long hair, S and L together give a medium hair length dog, okay? So these were the two dogs, if you like, on uh, Noah's Ark. So they fall in love and they have offspring. And they have one that inherits an S gene from each of the parents. That one has two S genes. It's going to look different to the parents. Does it have different information? Well, it's not new information. It's a new combination of information. But it's going to look a little different because it's got a different combination. And then you might get one that looks like the parents that inherits an S and an L gene. And then there's one other combination. What is that? L and L. Oh, it's got something new. Well, it's got a new combination of information, but the information was already there in the parents. It's just the new combination of information. Now, the dogs move towards a cold climate. Those that have short hair and medium hair get cold and they die. And now you're only left with dogs that have L genes who on their own will only ever produce dogs with what? Al genes, they could never produce short hair or medium hair again. You, you form a different species of dog. That's a, that's a long haired dog. You get the idea? If they move towards a hot climate, what's going to happen there? Well, those with long hair and medium hair overheat. They die. And now you're only left with dogs with S genes who are on their own will only ever produce dogs with what? S genes. And so over time, through natural selection, adaptation, what happens is you can form all these distinct species of dogs, but they're still 100% dogs, and they came from the original gene pool. Think about this. From a perspective of Darwinian evolution, you supposedly start with matter, no information, and over time, matter has to give rise to zillions of bits of information for all the information to build all the different kinds. So we should see increasing information all the time to build all these different kinds of animals and plants. Actually, what we observe is a loss of information, redistribution of information, it fits exactly with what the Bible would tell us. Actually, when we form different species, they actually have less information overall than the original, which means it's the opposite of evolution. This is evidence against evolution, and yet it's taught as evidence for evolution. And then you start to realize Noah didn't need anywhere near the number of animals on the ark that people think he did. He didn't need all the species of dogs, only two. He didn't need the African elephants and the Indian elephants and the stegomastodons and the mastodons and the mammoths. He only needed two of the elephant kind. And when the elephants came off the ark, again, just like dogs, over time you'll end up with different species forming, but they all come from the original gene pool and the incredible information that God put there in the first place. See how we can have answers? Isn't it easy to understand? Really is, makes a difference. Helps you understand this. The Bible got it right about biology. Wow, because <laughs> it really is the Word of God. Now, are you getting more excited about being a Christian? I hope so.